Good afternoon. It's a, so uh, it's a big pleasure to be here today with all of you. And I wanted to start off with a sort of just a thank you for the sponsors for the event. But I also wanted to mention something about Gov Zero in Taiwan here. I was doing some math this morning. And you have 116,000 116, followers on Facebook. I had to add up all the Facebook followers and Twitter followers for the Code for America, the Sunlight Foundation, and eDemocracy to add up to about the same number. Of course, you have a much smaller population, so we need another 1.4 million people to like our sites in the U.S. to be as popular as you are in Taiwan. 十一万六千个人在你们的脸书那把美国那些Call for America 还有我们的基金会以及数位政府的网站全部都加起来差不多也就是这个人数可是如果加上台湾人因为我们的人比较少这样代表美国人还需要一百四十万的人喜欢我们这些网站我们的受欢迎程度才能跟领事政府相当 If you are part of the future story to tell around the world uh, I'm part of the past story so back in 1994, I helped create the world's first election website. In fact, I would call it perhaps one of the world's first civic technology projects run by volunteers who gathered data from the government, the media, the candidates, and put it on this brand new thing called the World Wide Web. I happen to also, when I started eDemocracy as a citizen, I worked in government. I created the state portal, the homepage for the state of Minnesota. So I was government by day and citizen by night. In 1998, we had an interesting person, a former pro wrestler, become the governor of the state of Minnesota. And he used the internet to go around the media straight to the people. As an independent candidate, he won, and on election night, he said he shocked the world. In part, he used the internet to do that. So a decade before Facebook, eDemocracy created the online citizen Digital Town Square. In fact, we even used real names way back in 1994. And today, we do a lot of work at the neighborhood level, the more local level, where in some areas we have 30% of households participating. I have well over a thousand of my neighbors in an online group talking about local issues and community events every day. 那一九九四年在脸书成立在十多年前，我们就建立了这个数位的市民广场。那那时候到现在呢，我们大概有些地方它的普及率大概达百，就是地方区大概百分之三十的住户都有参与，讨论一些地方事务为主。At e-democracy.org/forward/slash/learn, these slides are available. In fact, even more slides are available. Most of the images can be clicked upon. So obviously, I don't have the time to talk about 10 lessons over 20 years. We can't do that in, in, in less than 30 minutes. But I'm going to zoom through a number of these slides, and you'll be able to download the ones that you would like later. PowerPoint,因为我们会谈到20年来的十大经验总结,当然我不会谈到每一个细项,但如果你有兴趣的话,你也可以上网下载。So um, I'm going to zoom through a handful of lessons, and because I've spoken at a number of different events, I know this is the most technical audience, and I can really geek out, so I'm excited about that. However, the number one lesson I have after 20 years is this is really about people, all right? It's about Friends and family connecting on social media. This is my son Liam. Public life comes second. So this really came home. So missed one. Uh, to me, uh, in terms of the internet, 
the phrase is, necessity is the mother of all invention. So when the, the husband of a family friend of ours went missing, we used over 10 different online tools to help crowd lead a search. Sadly, Joe was never found and is most likely drowned in the Mississippi River. But I was able to go to Open Twin Cities, which is a Code for America brigade, which is also part of my, my nonprofit, eDemocracy, and post on our online group and say, I need a tool to help us with mapping for the river search. And they pointed out a tool building on open street map data that allowed us to print out maps. 那当然，我发现需求是发明之母。那那时候呢，我们朋友中有一个他家庭，他的先生就失踪了。因此，我就在靠着民主主导寻人行动中，我用了十几种电子工具。那我发现，我甚至就到了 Call for America， 这当然也是其中一个我自愿参与的一个一个组织。到那里，我就跟大家说，我们需要这个工具，我们需要写一种程式呢，发开发一种程式，是可以让电子的地图中可以被印出来，并且可以借此来寻求这个。A key lesson is that when people are in a moment of crisis, how do they use technology to try to help solve their problem? We can learn a lot from that. So, we most learn about the key lesson is that when people are in a moment of crisis, how do they use technology to try to help solve their problem? We can learn a lot from that. The next big lesson. Over 20 years is the connection between groups, online groups, and places or geography. So, somehow back in 1998, I concluded that the most democratizing aspect of the internet is the ability to organize and communicate in groups, when we can talk two-way. However, a lot of that conversation, when it's national, doesn't have as much impact as it might have on the everyday citizen. And so, when you're able to take that down to the city or neighborhood level, we often see some dramatic change. I'm not sure what happened to my star here, <laughs> but the idea is that local online groups—it's about who you reach and how powerful they can be. Kind of like a Facebook group today, if you will. The second one we learned about the topic is that online groups have a strong relationship with the community. In 1998, I found that online groups are the way to connect with the people and form a community. Many times, the issues of the country are not solved by such a method, so it has no impact on the ordinary citizen. We found that if you can get into the neighborhood, into a single person's house, it will have a huge impact on the community. You can see this new star, it is like the internet, how it connects with the people and how it connects with the people. The other concept is that when you can add personalized online notification, telling people about things they're interested in, and you combine that with geography, so things around me, and democracy, people can then act on that information to have a greater impact in their neighborhood, in their city, in their country. And to me, the accelerant then is the group engagement that can use that timely content. 那我认为最了不起的地方就是个人化的讯息，在在足以地缘政治呃地缘关系以及民主，就会发现你就可以从不管是社区到这个城市或一个国家，都可以让人民对于某些议题呢采取行动，并且带来很大的影响。So the big issue here is the idea that we have technology, we have information, but what about democratic intent, the desire, the passion? To use these tools to make things more open, transparent, and engaging, because ultimately we want to have governance that can listen, engage, and respond, as well as ideally people who can work together using online tools to help them solve problems, not just online but also in person. The third topic is that democracy is very important. But we have the technology, we have the information, but the problem is how to use this democratic agenda, that is, the desire to engage with the democracy. 这样子，我们才能让政府、让整个氛围变得更开放、更互动、更透明化。我们也需要能够倾听人民声音，让人民参与并互动，给予回应的政府。更好的是，人民之间能够互相合作，一起来解决问题。One quick example. Oops, wrong way. One quick example.、Uh, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, now is himself on Twitter, and he actually—I don't know how many of you have a whole set of advisors helping you tweet, but. Uh, he actually did the typing himself. Democratic intent. <laughs>
。那其中一个例子是美国总统奥巴马呢，他现在也在推特上呢。我不知道你们自己如果在做在推特推文的时候，是否有一堆的这咨询的顾问在你旁边帮你？不过这是他本人。Another key driver of innovation when it comes to democracy online is what candidates obviously do to try to get elected. And number one lesson, whether you're a small NGO, a government, or a candidate, is let people give you their email address or their text number, and in this case, their postal code, so you can always tell them when you have a better website. 你可以看到这个竞选活动呢，也当然就促使了很多创新活动，因为这些选举人他们必须，他们想要被选上。不管你是 NGO 呢，或者是政府，或者是你只是竞选。选举人呢，你就可以看了，就可以显现一下，哎，你的竞选活动的这个英这个网页做的有多好，因此可以收集人民选民的一些，比如他们想要的 text 的电话号码或者是 email。You may have、uh, sites like this in Taiwan that take legislative information from your legislative one and make it available online. This is Sunlight Foundation、uh, and a mobile app as well. This is、uh, they work for you from a group called My Society again. Enhancing what data comes from the Congress and setting up, in particular, to provide email alerts based on people's preferences. 那在台湾可能有类似的资类似的网站，它这呢其实是 Sunlight 基金会，那它就是提供一些立法以及议会等相关的资讯给民众。Another key concept that I think is really powerful is the power of agenda setting, and just quickly, it's this share button, <laughs> right? This is really, really important because it's about people taking content and sharing it people to people. This is how we form new public opinion because we can share so much more content and discussions with each other. 那另外一个就是议程制定，这非常重要。可以看到这个 share 的这个按钮，因为它就是等于是权力共享。你会把你看到内容分享给大家，这很重要，因为这样可以形成一些新的舆论。One of the challenges, while we have more power to influence the media、uh, through blogging, through Facebook, etc., it also connects, in the United States anyway, with a 24-hour sort of political spin cycle. They call it on cable TV news. So sometimes the conversations can be quite negative, and the people who love politics are way into it. The everyday citizen might just say, "Well, the internet just has a lot of flames." 你可以看到这里呢，就是公民之间互动可以形成新的舆论。那不管我们现在，我们可能可以透过社群网络呢，影响到很多的大众媒体。那在美国一个很特别问题，就是因为美国二十四小时他们的新闻的政治联播，就变成说人民他可能太想参与，或者他们在上面会讲太多很负面的言论。Uh, Mr. Gao has prepped me that you folks look for solutions and to new challenges, and part of the challenge of the issue of loud noises are are there tools that allow us to do more deliberation or decision making. Or participatory budgeting. So Lumio is a project from New Zealand which does online making groups. The participatory participatory budgeting project is a project that is basically advising governments for in-person, sometimes online enhanced ways of distributing a percentage of local budgets. And I love projects that do something. On my neighborhood forum, someone said, "Let's start a community garden," and they did this really radical thing. They got together and had an in-person meeting, and then a year and a half later, I, I had a plot at the community garden. 那这边呢就可以看到，我们制定议程之后，下一步要做什么？那你可以看到很多很多国家，比如说纽西兰，它有一个呃 ，Lumio， 它就是要确保大家可以共同参与。然后另外一个 P P B P， 也就是参与共同参与预算的一个计划。那它也很特别，它就是让你每一个人呢，你可以上去，然后对于你地方预算有什么意见可以提出。那最后还有一个。I'm going to share a few examples of, of youth-oriented projects. We've been talking to a number of、uh, groups of young people here in Taiwan. It's been quite, quite, quite exciting. So here are some quick examples. First one is Black Lives Matter. It's the power of hashtag.、Uh, while we use Twitter、uh, for this quite a bit in the United States, you can use hashtags, of course, on Facebook. And it has allowed people、uh, to have nationwide conversations about、uh, policing and,、uh, and, in, in many cases, the deaths of、uh, African American men in particular. 那在台湾呢，这个年轻世代有很大的力量，所以我也特别想要提到这一点。那在美国一个例子，就 Black Lives Matter， 它等于是你在脸书跟推特，你都可以用 hashtag 的井字号呢，让全球可以一起参与对某个议题的讨论。那当然，这有时候。
，可能是因为一个呃黑，在美国一个黑人因为什么事情，因为警察或死亡所造成的一个影响。There was some analysis of the tweets "Black Lives Matters" on day one, and then on day two, you see how it spread not only around the United States but around the world. And then on day eleven, there was a, a videotape that came out of a gentleman who couldn't breathe, and he said, "I can't breathe." And so another hashtag, "I can't breathe," emerged. This is just a good illustration. If you go get the slides and click on more, you'll find the, 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 the this in real time. But it's an illustration of how conversations can can cluster around a hashtag and spread around the world. You can see this hashtag's power. It can spread around the world. From the beginning, you see, first day, first day, then the next 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 day. I think perhaps Minneapolis, the city where I'm from, is maybe more like Taiwan because we use Facebook a lot in local politics. In fact, we elected seven of our 13 council members were brand new, and their average age was 32. They were Facebook natives. They were been on Facebook since high school or college.、Um, and the key thing is that once they got elected, they used their Facebook profiles to ask the public questions about issues before the council. And our mayor, who's 46, my age. She posts daily, multiple times on Facebook,、uh, about issues and different things that are happening. 那觉得很特别是，还有由 Facebook 产生出来催生的政治人物。那在明尼亚波利这个城市，也就是我呃我我来自的地方哈，我们就选出了七个新的市议员，平均年龄只有三十二岁。那他们每天在网络上互动。那四我们四十六岁市长在上面每天发文。On the Gov Zero Facebook group, on the Facebook group, there's a conversation about.、Uh, How can you look up who your local elected official is in Taiwan? And I suggested that perhaps、uh, you could crowdsource where all your officials are on Facebook, particularly、uh, their Facebook profiles, their personal profiles, and have a get-friendly campaign. And maybe Taiwan can be one of the most connected Facebook friends with their politicians. 那我就看到呃，临时政府网站上，他就有个问题，就讲到说，哎，要怎么样可以跟你们地方的代议士呢？就是整个连接上，那因此我就建议说，你们可能可能可以就找到这个戴医师他本身个人网页、个人的脸书，然后就发起个活动，就是讲说如何和他做朋友。因此你就可能变成台湾，就可以变成让大家民众和戴医师成为最接近、最连接性的一个地方。What's exciting is to find new ideas and new models that work in one country or one place, and figure out how we share that all around、uh, the world. And one of the key things about Code for America. Gov Zero and others is that a lot of these groups are of the internet. This is kind of what e-democracy was a decade earlier too, not just on the internet. Meaning we actually created things fresh rather than sort of taking our newspaper and, and putting it on the web. 那因此呢，我们也想要知道一些新的模式，因此因运而生，然后找到一些好的模式，要如何分享到全世界。比如说，你不是只是去上网浏览而已，而是你属于某一个线上团体。那就像我们十几年前 eDemocracy 也在做的事情，就是要如何创造这样的归属感，并且不断的创新。I've been told many times now that politics in Taiwan are very national. It's been a, a you know an island and twenty twenty three million people or so.、Um, and I think one of the issues is that really for young people. Things are more issue-based and more nationally based, but once you start having a family, people become more locally connected. So I'm very curious about technologies that could emerge, that could embrace、uh, geography, if you will,、uh, and that things that I would say young people can do to build technology for intergenerational connections for the long term. 那我也常讲到说，台湾其实是一个非常全球性的地方，因为我们的政治、我们的议题常常都全。全球整个岛呢，整个台湾两千三百万人民都不断在讨论。那当然，年轻人如何利用你手上的工具这个科技呢，可以连接不同时代，也是个很有趣的议题。So here's a a real challenge. After all this time、uh, working to help raise more voices online, it's been just that more voices. But has it really been new voices? Are we hearing for more for more young people, from more seniors, from more lower income residents? In this case, it's a just.、Uh, An analysis by race in the United States by a very trusted group called, if you go pureinternet.org, and we showed big divides based on race and income in terms of people who are signing online petition, emailing government officials, commenting on news blogs, or sending letters to the editor online. And so, by gathering data about who's doing what with the internet in politics, we can strengthen our democracy by filling in the gaps with really effective outreach. 
那这也是我们其中遇到最关键的一个困难，就是我们发现使用参与这个数位民主的人呢，他其实我们没有看到更新的声声音出声，也就是说，数位政府使用有显示很大的种族的差异。This is a, a, a survey by the United States Census、uh, of 50,000 households, and they found that basically people who make over 50,000 U.S. dollars a year are twice as likely to use government service online. So this, this is a question about services. So I just think it's really important to be able to use this data to help, in this case, governments think about, well, how do we do better outreach to reach people、uh, who are lower income or have less education、uh, so they can access government services online. 那也是政府做的调查，我们发现说，如果你年薪在美国超过五万的话，你呃比起那些年薪低五万的人，更有容易使用政府所提供的线上的资源，而且这个差距是两倍的差距。那因此，我们要利用这样的数据呢，来改善我们现在的做法，可以触及到更多的人。So ultimately, this is the issue, right?、Uh, as an NGO, if we're not bringing in new voices, why do it at all, right? So we've been very lucky. Uh, to have received some grant money that allowed us to do a two summers of outreach. My outreach team spoke ten different languages. We used census data mapping out where、uh, immigrant communities were, were were concentrated, and we went door to door. We went door to door in lots of different communities.、Uh, but the young people, mostly it's mostly young people in their twenties who work for us, that was incredibly inspiring. So one of these ideas as well is: Are there youth work programs that could be adjusted to do digital? Engagement. 那我们自己，我自己身为 NGO， 那我们就发现，如果没有办法听到更多不一样的声音，那我们到底在做什么，就没有意义了。因此，我们也很高兴，我们有募集到一些钱。我们两个夏，连续两个夏天呢，都这样，都做这个 Outreach Program， 就是能触及到更多人，让这些年轻人呢，他们等于是呃，一一个一个挨家挨户去敲门，然后确保这些声音比较不容易被听到的少数族群，也可以共同参与线上民主。Behind the scenes, eDemocracy used a open source online groups platform called GroupServer, GroupServer.org from New Zealand. And what it allowed us to do was to take a paper sign-up sheet where you could write down your email and have full control. We can just add people to the online group based on paper permission. That way, that 70-year-old grandmother who signed up never actually has to come to the website, and it just came to her email. While those under 35 who hated email, they could just turn it off. Very easily from the website, but the key thing is we really use technology and shape it to help craft a community. 那我们现在做的，我们数位政治这个在做的就是一个开放源码的一个 open source 的平台，就是确保说大家就挨家挨户拿这个纸，然后只要你同意给我们 email， 我们就可以发送讯息给你。不论你是老人家或者你是年轻人，你也不用到我们的网站就可以收到我们的讯息。If you're a Python programmer, send me an email and I'll. Send you a link to where Group Server is on GitHub. 如果你自己把你的 email 给我的话，我也可以给提供你相关资讯。So you folks know a lot more about this than I do in some ways, but we're talking about open data and civic technology.、Uh, this is the easy、uh, explanation. 这很简单，就是我们是开放的，相信大家都很懂。And as I talk to、uh, different groups around around Taiwan and other places, I talk about how there's certain data from government that's public, that's in a data set, and can be shared and reused by citizens, businesses, other units of government. And this whole concept has been really spreading in many countries around the world, and it's a very exciting time if you're interested in、uh, making things happen with government data. 那关于公开政府资料呢？你就可以看到，就一部分的政府资料，它其实可以被公开、被公民，不管是政府的其他部门，或是某些公司来共同使用并且分享的。那在很多国家都已经开始这样做了。I understand you had a it was a hackathon yesterday, so we'll work for stickers. 你可以看到这各式各样不一样的一些立场的贴纸。Of course, there's some other examples later on where there's resources going into this as well as volunteerism. So one example、uh, is Code for America.、Uh, we have local brigades. So this is Minneapolis-St. Paul, or known as the Twin Cities. That's the one that's part of eDemocracy. So you have an umbrella, a way to create local groups, and then here is Open Twin Cities,、uh, the local brigade. 你可以看到这 Code for America， 你看到地图呢，我们散布在很多地方。然后还有其中一个 brigade 也是 Open Twin Cities， 在右下角。
and we use Meetup and uh, Eventbrite and other tools to organize regular meetings and hackathons. 那我们就通过媒体一些我们的工具呢，来确保我们可以不断呃进行会议，然后讨论事情。And you heard about Populous earlier. This is Open Data Day events that happen all around the world in February, and we have the Open Knowledge Foundation, another this global network. 那之前就听到 Populous， 你看左下角可以看到，我们在二月的时候，我们在各个全世界各个地方都有一些都有一些活动在进行，然后右右手右下角也是一样。So an emerging trend on the civic tech. Side. This is at the Code for America Summit. Is the concept of building with, not just for. So we spoke the other day uh, to NGOs from around Taiwan. There were probably uh, I don't know 30 NGOs represented in a, in a very packed room, and a number of those groups. I said you ought to connect with that hackathon, and the, you are the use case, if you will. People are looking to connect, and so the better job we do reaching out. Uh, let's see, I'm timed out here. I don't know if you got. What's it going to do here? Got it. Got it. And uh, so next one is institutions and policy. So an, another key concept is the idea that we're, we're doing this for real. There's a lot of words on here. But in short, more people are now paid to care. <laughs> it's part of the job, right? And yes, you know, one of the reasons, like for e-democracy, I... I I had a day job for the first 10 years, right? I subsidized my nonprofit. Then I got to work for it for a while, and now I'm subsidizing the nonprofit again uh, with my volunteer time. But all around the world, we're building organizations and, and efforts. And one of the key ones I want to point out, is, which is emerging in government circles, is the open government partnership and trying to get government to, to, to make more commitments and take more actions. 那我们其实不是只上谈片，我们还有就是推动很多建立制度跟政策的议题，比如说我特别要强调是开放政府的伙伴关系就可以促使政府采取更多有意义的行动。So here's the open government partnership, OGP. 这就是开放政府伙伴关系 OGP. A key part of this concept is that when Obama became president, his his team put together an open government directive, and that policy led to action, like data portals. And now states like Utah are beginning to also put up more data. One of my concerns, though, is what happens between administrations and what things are voluntary that one government will do and what things should be put into the rule of law. That这个就是在美国总统奥巴马选上的时候，他就开做了这个美国开放政府指令，然后做了一个这个data入口网站，把很多的资料都放上去。那由他州也跟进，但我觉得最大的问题就在于哪一些呢是政府他给自愿开始
One of the biggest challenges is loudest voices. People tend to comment on the things they disagree with. It often accents the sense that we're in conflict. So how do we create online tools and or ways of facilitation that bring out, you know, whether it's consensus, that's one thing, but to me, it's, uh, having greater understanding. Another one, and I'll translate, is one of the challenges with Facebook and filtering is in our friends is we often see the things that are most similar to us and we end up living in a bit of a bubble. 那我認為我目前面臨到最大的挑戰 while eDemocracy has roughly 20,000 users in our open source network, it's very difficult for a new group to start something where they completely control it, right? So they tend to use things like Facebook groups. And one of the key things is a continuous evolution in those services. One is that it raises the expectation of users, and so they stop using your website. Or two, you join their website and use it, and then they change it on you and they make it less democratic. And so it's just something to be to note that you lose some control when you use these third party services, but often the price is right. 那通常呢,我們在做e-democracy面臨一些困難,就是說很多時候大家可希望用臉書,不希望用我們網站,或者你就可能不用網站去使用臉書的,因此要如何去觸及到更多人也是我們所面臨的挑戰. So let me just conclude and say that we are, everyone here, the engagement generation. And Let's think about what we can build, what can be. Not what we have today, what can be together. See you online.